In this video, we're going to cover working with our new meta actors here and working in locations like this one where we're actually outside. So let's get right into it. So here we are in 0.7.0. .0, and what's new is that we have locations. Um, these locations, quote unquote, are outside and they have a sun and sky and weather, which we're going to show. That is what's new. These stages, the sets, and this work in progress, they're all inside and they're being lit by uh, space lights. There's no sun. So big difference here. So let's make a new project here. We'll call this uh, Project Grid. I think I need to call it two because I've done a couple of these already. And load in. Okay, so here we are in the grid map, and some of the inputs have changed in this uh, 0.7 update. So we're going to hit Y to go to editor. It used to be E. And to move now, if you hit WASDA and whatnot, you can't move. You need to hold right click, and then uh, WASD will work. And to go up and down, it's no longer space and control. It is E and Q. So that's going to take a little bit while to get used to. Uh, that is the Unreal Engine 5 editor hotkeys, and actually it's a really good combo for um, freeing up shift and some other hotkeys we're going to need in the future. So a little bit of a difference, you need to hold down right click to move around with WASDA, and it's Q and E now to go up and down, so something to get used to. Let's look at some of the new actors uh, that we've brought back here. These are our meta actors, as we're calling them. And on Mac OS, their hair is bugged right now. We upgraded to a new version of Unreal Engine, and that broke their grooms, so to speak. So we'll be doing something special for Mac OS just right now. Don't try to add hair to these actors, and they shouldn't have hair to start with. So let's fly down and quickly look at the functionality of these new meta actors. If we start at the top, that's supposed to be presets. Um, there's nothing there yet. Next, if you're on PC anyway, you can switch the hair uh, off. And there's a couple different uh, hairstyles here that are available. They look kind of weird with the blue outline, but once you deselect, they look pretty normal. Uh, next, we have clothing, which we can take off the uh, the shirt. And there's a couple options. We're going to have a lot more. We're just kind of getting started here. And again, you can take off his pants. And we'll leave those on. And again, a really small amount of clothing for now, but we're just getting this up and running again. Uh, what's new, however, and I think pretty exciting, is this new uh, animation system for the body. So you can kind of go for a walk here and just see the different animations. Uh, some are sitting, some say talking, and we're going to try to do a better job organizing it so that it's clear uh, what's going on here and make it easier to find these. But for now, we just have this kind of like big list. So we're going to go back to our talking animation and we're going to hit pause. Um, this is like one of the older Cinetracer systems that uh, we kind of brought back here. And what you can do is scrub through this and pick a frame in here that you like from the animation. And um, this is our new way of uh, posing the actor, so to speak. So we're going to go with this hand uh, and body animation. And you'll see that this is new, is that the face is animating. So if we go to the face tab here, it's very similar. We can do a neutral talking animation, a smiling animation, or a smiling and talking animation. And we're going to have more of these in time. Right now it's in play mode and we want to go to pause mode and that's going to pause the face. So right now the body is posed or paused rather and the face is paused. And then we can just kind of go through here and hopefully find some sort of expression that makes sense uh, for uh, whatever we're doing. Uh, next up, once we have our body and face pose, we might want him to be looking in a different direction, perhaps at another actor, which well, we won't do at the moment. But to change their eye line, uh, for now we've put that on the body tab Oops, that's my alarm going off. Uh, we've put this on the body tab here. And what you can do is change these sliders and it will change the direction that they're looking uh, horizontally like this. And then it will change uh, vertically, which way they're looking mostly with their head. So right now he's like kind of looking up or perhaps looking down at now at someone that's uh, shorter than him perhaps, or he's looking at something off screen. So that is how uh, the metahumans work. And one other thing that's new here, we've changed some of the icons are these nature uh, foliage uh, assets. They don't have the greatest icons, but you can kind of just go through them. And we'll take out this tree and we're gonna put it right there. We're not gonna build the whole environment here. And this is a good time to talk about how selection has changed. So right now, if you select this actor and then you select the, the air, it'll deselect them. Select the actor, click the ground, it'll deselect them. This is the way that Cinetracer 1 worked. So if we select him and then select the tree, it's going to switch and swap uh, the selection. This is probably a more standard way of doing selection. Uh, and if you want to add 
this actor to the selection, you're going to hold shift. So it's kind of the more standard way of selecting things. We just kind of started with a kind of a funny version of it as I was working out multi-select. So again, it's going to be hold shift to add to selection. The hit boxes on these are a little funny. It might take a couple times. And you can always just click nothing or now you can hit escape. It's going to drop all selections. So should be operating a little bit closer to how Unreal Engine 5 editor works and also Cinetracer 1. So now that we're outside, I'm just going to, it's bugging me that he's looking this way. I'm going to have him look <laughs> that way. Now, now that we're outside, how do we take advantage of this new sky and weather system? Well, that is up here, kind of unintuitively the space light, but these are our environment settings. So we have a lot of buttons and let me walk you through them. So the first one is the uh, time of day. So right now I think it's sun already or daytime, but if we hit magic hour, we'll see that it has become very uh, sun steady. Next, if we go to twilight, we're putting us directly at the time where the sun is just below the horizon. And this is uh, what I consider twilight anyway. And if we go to nighttime, we're actually going to get uh, stars uh, outside. And there's the moon somewhere as well. So you can also change this by dragging this slider. And the sun position changes. Um, but the, the change is a little bit weird. Um, so I, I made these presets to make it a little bit easier. If you want to change where the sun is, this thing's still a little funny. I'm still learning how to work with the system that makes this work. My best suggestion is to just click it. Don't drag it. And then it does this weird animation thing. I'm still working out why it's why it exactly works this way, but it's it's pretty annoying to deal with. But if you s click around with this long enough, you will be able to s rotate the sun around you. Uh, I'm gonna put it back to uh, here. And again, I'm I'm working on this setting so it doesn't like animate like this. It's kind of weird. Uh, next, let's go to weather. So I believe this is the sunny preset already that we're in. And what we can do is drag the clouds so that they're completely gone, or we can drag them in and find something in between all the way to overcast like that. So I'm gonna reset it to sunny. And so let's look at some of these presets. We have overcast, which is pretty much what we just did there. Then we have raining. Uh, raining also added some fog. So these are presets of these settings here. And you'll see that uh, the ground is now wet or the grid is wet. And the tree is actually wet too, if you go look close enough. And if we switch to snow, this is like the most dramatic one. Uh, there is fog. The ground is now white with snow. And so are the trees. And so most of the exterior assets are going to actually react to this weather. Not everything will, though. Um, but we might be uh, changing that over time to allow more things to react to the weather. So also included in this update is the new park map here. So I'm going to call this uh, Project Park 1 here. Looks like I already had one of those. So this is a very small map. If you kind of spin around, you'll see that there's nothing here. It's basically the flat map where I've like pre-built something. So the concept with this map and this style map is that you can look 180. We can look this way and we can look this way. So it's like shooting coverage uh, in a location, but never turning around. That is the concept with these kind of pre-built small exteriors. I'm not looking to immediately anyway build out like an entire city or town really just kind of art direct like a simple kind of what I consider like a 180 degree set similar to having a set that only has three walls. So I'm just going to go through and build a little scene here and we'll start with our female actor, put her there and then we'll get our male actor and we'll have uh, a little bit of a conversation here. Uh, we are looking to have a lot more customizations with the metahumans, but for now um, they have very little going on here as far as customizing. Um, oh, default was messy. Okay, interesting. So I'm going to go to um, back to casual. The hair color is a kind of work in progress here. So he's he's blonde now. And we'll switch to a t-shirt. And I'm going to switch to jeans. And I'll uh, we'll switch to slip-ons here. Let's pick some new animations. Uh, I'm not going to do a chair right now. <laughs> we'll do this one, kind of sassy. And we'll have him talking neutral. So then the idea is to kind of like, you know, judge which way he's looking. Let's go ahead and go to eyeline horizontal and kind of face him this way. Now this map might be extremely expensive for you to render on Mac. I know it's really hard unless you have like a super, super Mac. But even on PC, this map's pretty heavy. Foliage is, is usually pretty hard to render. So this is a bit of a benchmark for me to see how uh, other people's computers handle this. I would definitely consider keeping your settings modest if you're gonna try to use these pre-built maps 
Uh, so there is our male actor. He's animating. He's talking. It's kind of fun. We'll spin around this way. And we'll do the same thing for her. Uh, we could just change her haircut. We'll go to this one. Um, we'll do the collared shirts and these shorts. These are not really good thumbnails yet. And let's switch this to being... Um, everyone's just doing the hips. We'll, we'll do this one like that. So I'm going to just kind of rotate her a little bit. Uh, and we'll do the rest with the eye line controls here. So we'll kind of spin her looking this way. And she's maybe looking up just a little bit. Um, it really depends on the camera angle more than anything else, but we're gonna we're gonna go for it like from here. Um, I like it being sunny, so I'm gonna keep it sunny for now. Let's grab this camera and we'll just frame up two shots. So you'll see that it is bright outside. Um, sort of makes sense. And what we're going to want to do is bring in some ND or change exposure the other way uh, that are possible. I'm actually going to change this to a four and then bring the ND back out. This is, again, not like the exact things you'd have in the real world, but uh, it is at least brighter. So I'm going to zoom in here to about a 40. And this would be our shot. So we could then hit enter. And you just got to risk it if you're not going to pause them and you're just playing the animations. Turned out okay this time. And then uh, instead of making a new shot with this system and animating it, I'm actually just going to make a new scene. And that new scene is just this exact same scene uh, for now is what happens. So we're going to stay on the 40 mil and slowly spin around to the reverse here. Hit tab to turn off that and focus on him. And we'll see if we can get something that's not horrible. I think his eyeline's a little off actually, right? So, I mean, he could be delivering like that. There's, there's no reason not to, but... Uh, I'm going to do show monitor, which with the foliage, is, this is getting really heavy to render, even from my computer. Um, I'm just going to turn him this way a little bit more, and I think that's looking a little bit better for the eye line. Yeah, this is heavy to render with this and all this foliage. You know, we'll probably calm this map down. This might be too much, uh, too much uh, foliage for most people's computers. But there we are, a uh, pretty cool shot. And I'm going to hit enter. And we got a decent looking uh, reverse here. And let's hit tab, and for no real reason other than we can, let's make a new scene, which is again has just duplicated this, and I'm gonna change the weather to being uh, snowy. Who knows why? I didn't have it affect the characters uh, yet. Actually, it affects the stand-ins, I believe. Let me check this, if this is still on. I believe I set it up this way. Yes, okay, so actually our stand-in actors are actually still, they get snowed on, but the, uh, the new actors don't yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and do our wide shot uh, from here. And now it is snowing and we're showing off that system uh, at the moment. So let's hit enter. And we have uh, a kind of sort of nonsensical three shots going on here. So if we go with scene zero, uh, it was this over the shoulder and it's nice and sunny. Scene one is his over the shoulder. And then scene two is snowy with someone in the background who's been there for a very long time and has a lot of snow on them. So that wraps it up for this update. Um, this map is a little experimental. It's very heavy. This foliage is pretty heavy. But if you want to start building exteriors, we are going to bring in uh, pieces so you can build something like this yourself. And to start, if you want to start playing with it, we do have trees and bushes and whatnot. And you, know, you can add as many as your computer can handle. Uh, however, I am looking to continue to build um, pre-built maps like this. I just uh, learning UE5 still and figuring out like, you know, how much people's computers can handle. Anyway, that wraps it up for this update and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.